that the Spitfire, but with parts from the cannon and the four machine guns, we could also carry a bomb. Uh, we didn't, didn't do very frequent bombing, but we did on quite a few occasions. And, uh, um, and another guy and I were lucky enough to set a, a Jerry submarine on fire, which was in dry dock in Cherbourg. The, the, uh, it was very primitive bombing because the only way that you could have, you didn't have any uh, bomb site or anything like that. Uh, you just pointed your aircraft at the target. <laughs> so we were quite pleased with that. Um, then, uh, not all that long after that, we were posted to uh, attack the flying bombs, the V-1s, which were creating havoc, of course, and uh, killing a uh, vast number of people. They were aimed at London, and our um, job was to, at all costs, prevent them from getting to London. We took over the, the anti-aircraft uh, fire on the coast, there was a patrol of our planes at sea, then the anti-aircraft, then us um, again, and then of course there was the balloon barrage around uh, London itself. Um, we were fairly successful, and uh, the thing was, at all costs they must not get to London. Uh, but eventually we had a deputation from with the mayor of Mainstone uh, and some of the councillors saying, please could we stop shooting them down over Mainstone? <laughs> 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 so uh, uh, that was uh, an interesting thing, but uh, then of course, as you all know, the B-2s came, the rockets, and there was nothing you could do about that because they went straight up. <coughs> straight down, and they couldn't even sound the air raid warnings or anything like that. Um, I think I've uh, more or less finished. I, I, I don't think there's anything much else that's worth talking about, but uh, uh, just a quick glance here. Oh, yeah. Um, at one stage, um, I had taken uh, nine aircraft to Brussels, and uh, we, well, what we did, we, we had landing strips by then in Belgium and Holland, and uh, we would uh, fly from there. We weren't getting very much in the way of opposition from the Luftwaffe by then. and. Uh, then we would take uh, the aircraft back to Britain for proper servicing and maybe to change one or two of the pilots. Anyway, uh, we were coming back from um, Brussels and we found that every airdrome in the south of England was under fog. And uh, eventually I was told uh, to go to Manston where they had Fido. I don't know whether you, any of you know anything about it, but what it was really was uh, on either side of the, of the, of the runway in the Anston, there were these pipes, perforated pipes, and under pressure, I don't know whether it was kerosene or paraffin or what it was, uh, burnt, and that showed you uh, where the runway was. Um, as was customary in those things, I'm leading, I uh, had to wait until all my fellow pilots were on the ground. My petrol gauge was showing empty. <laughs> and uh, anyway, they all got down, just one went off the runway into a very soft ground and tipped up on his nose. Um, and then it came my turn to come down and I landed on the, the, the strip and my engine cut out. <laughs> no petrol. <laughs> So that was a pretty lucky escape, I think. Now there was criticism of uh, this Fido uh, in the uh, Brevet Club newsletter. 
somebody wrote and said that it was a complete waste of money. But in that case anyway, I knew that it saved mine spitfires and probably a large number of pilots because all we could have done otherwise, we couldn't obviously expect to land and hope that you weren't on top of somebody's house or something like that. We just had to fly out to sea and ditch in the dark. So um, there was a, 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 an apology printed in the Revet Tub. <laughs> I've written in and said that it, it certainly did uh, have some value. Um, a little thing I forgot to mention was that um, before I talked about this episode with the air, uh, this convoy of cars and so on, um, we'd had posted to our squadrons um, American pilots who were destined to become squadron commanders or something like that to get some operational experience with us. Uh, hence I came to be in the street when we crashed like that. But I must say that the the American uh, navigation was pretty lousy. <laughs> we were escorting um, their bombers and uh, they would rendezvous at the wrong place at the wrong height at the wrong time. <coughs> and it was dreadful. <laughs> However, uh, as it was. Um, then uh, came uh, the E Day, and uh, I was on leave actually in London. <coughs> and then uh, some weeks later um, I was on a vessel coming back to New Zealand and uh, I uh, had been told that um, I was to take, uh, have leave. I then had um, just on four and a half years, I did 800 operational flights and uh, I was to then uh, take a, a squadron up to the Far East. But then, fortunately for me, the bomb was dropped, and it was I rather dreaded going up there. Mm -hmm. I think that's about all I can tell you, but we were a lucky family. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>